Hello, my name is Virginia Kaklamani. I'm one of the co-directors of the San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium from UT Health in San Antonio. Uh, this is uh, an edition of uh, the SABCS Snippets. With me today, I have uh, Dr. Aditya Bardia from UCLA. Uh, Aditya, we just had an announcement about a pivotal clinical trial, the Destiny Breast 06. Um, pretty exciting uh, to, to hear, at least uh, preliminarily. Can you tell us about the trial? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me, uh, Virginia. Pleasure to be here today. So on 29th of April, 2024, we saw a press release related to Destiny Breast 06. This is a global phase three trial that evaluated a HER2 directed ADC called trastuzumab deroxetan or TDXT was a schema therapy for patients with ER positive metastatic breast cancer. This trial was a bit different from Destiny breast of four a couple of things that were different the first is that it did not require any prior chemotherapy so it was almost like first line chemotherapy setting comparing dado dxt versus capecitabine or napaclitaxel or paclitaxel the second difference was that this trial also included a subgroup of patients called her2 ultra low so that's HER2 expression that is not HER2 low. It's even lower than that, uh, more than zero, less than one. So it was a broader pa patient population, included both patients with HER2 low metastatic breast cancer, as well as this new category of HER2 ultra low, which pretty much is close to zero as you can get. So uh, based on the announcement, uh, we there is a statistically significant and clinically meaningful improvement in PFS, not just in the overall population, but also in subsets, including that, that ultra low. And, and so the way I'm thinking about this, and obviously we haven't seen the results yet, but I'm sure we'll see them relatively soon. Uh, now TDXT is moving into that first line cytotoxic therapy uh, setting. And, and it looks like it doesn't matter what the HER2 status is anymore. Uh, what, what do you, how, how do you interpret the results and what, what do you think you'll be doing? I fully agree, Virginia. We have to see the results, you know, the magnitude of benefit uh, in HER2 low and this uh, HER2 ultra low group as well. But based on the press release, what we've seen, it was clinically meaningful and statistically significant. And if as a community, now everyone is excited and this gets approved in this setting, what it would do is first move PDXT to an earlier line setting. Uh, so just after endocrine-based therapy, when we are looking at chemotherapy options, that's where TDXT would be used. And second, it would be a broader population. We would not need to look at this HER2 low status. There's always been a lot of debate between what's HER2 zero versus one plus. Different pathologists have different opinion regarding this category. So it might get rid of this HER2 low category, which would make it easier to use this drug for patients with metastatic breast cancer. That's exciting. But I, I guess now we're going to have to be asking our pathologist, is this completely zero or is this ultra low, right? So maybe another category. Yep, absolutely. I foresee, we'll, we'll see the results, but I foresee, you know, folks are excited. The results are clinically meaningful and significant as per press release. We probably would not look at HER2. It would just be, you know, HER2 positive or if it's not positive, use TDXT like we use sasituzumab govitekin regardless of trope 2 expression and even results with datapotumab deroxetan a trope 2 directed adc was regardless of trope 2 expression so we would use these adcs regardless of the expression perfect well thanks for being with us today i uh, appreciate it uh, thanks everybody for listening and uh, we'll see you at uh, one of our next editions thank you